So you probably have the same question I have. Every time I go to Total Wine and reach for this bottle, still lost in cash drink at $50, great, great value. But then I see the store pick right next to it at $80. And I think to myself, that's a pretty big jump. It's going to be worth the upgrade? Well, I sacrificed my money so we can find out together. Let's get it. Welcome to Whiskey Bank, my name is Dave. And Still Austin, the distillery was created in 2015 in Austin, Texas. And they do a lot of cool things, but they do three things really cool or really nicely or really awesome. Anyways, three things. First, all their grains, so their corn, their rye, their malted barley, it's all from the state of Texas. The reason they do that, even though it costs more, they can control the quality and the freshness and the timing so they can produce the best whiskey that they can. Second, Nancy Farley is their master blender. As many of you know, she's well known for her work with Joseph Madness cigar blends, but she's also worked with top brandy producers and other great distillers like Wyoming Whiskey. And that kind of translates to the third part. And the third thing that they do really well or really cool, they use the slow water reduction process which basically means they add water to the barrel while it's aging. Most companies, let's say Buffalo Trace, they add water at the end. So they age their whiskey for, let's say, six to eight years. They dump it out at, let's say, 130 proof, and then they add water diluted to 90 proof, and then bottle a Buffalo Trace. For them, they actually add water. They add water to the barrel at 118. So it goes in at 118 proof, and it comes out at 118 proof. And they can call it cast drink because it's actually coming out of the cast or barrel at 118. So maybe a little technicality there, but still it is what it is. But there's a couple of benefits to do that in Texas. So first is the fact that because of the extreme weather, the extreme heat and the extreme cold, the barrels expand and contract a lot faster pace than they do at, let's say, Kentucky or Scotland. So according to Still Austin, one year of aging in Texas is equivalent to about two, three years in Kentucky or almost seven years in Scotland, which is a lot. So, but there's downsides to that. So first is the angel share with evaporation. Because the expansion, a lot of whiskey is leaked and it also just evaporates because of the heat. So you lose a lot of the whiskey. Second is that alcohol usually tends to extract a lot more of the oaky tenants of the charred oak, which is a good thing, but if it's overdone, it's a really bad thing. So adding water to it not only gives you more whiskey, but at the same time, water extracts the caramelized sugars from the charred oak a lot better than alcohol. So you get really good tasting whiskey. So some of the stats on this, for the regular cash drink, it comes in at 118 proof. It's age. It says in the bottle it's aged at least two years. From still Austin, they say it's around two and a half years, which in Kentucky, according to them, is about four to six years of aging. And then it's Mashville, it's 70% corn, 25% rye, and 5% malted barley. And the price, $50. The stats on the store pick single barrels, proof it comes in at 116, which is slightly lower than the regular cash drink. It's age. Again, the bottle says at least aged at least two years, but from the research I can do, the other single barrels come around three and a half years. So this should be about the same. And again, according to Stella Austin, that should be about seven to nine years of age in Kentucky or over 20 years in Scotland. Take that for what you will. And the Mashville, it's the exact same as the cash drink. And the price, $80, $30 more or 60% more than this. So there's a couple of theories on why this is so much more expensive than this. First, the age. Obviously, two and a half years to three and a half years is a lot more aging. Even though if you only consider one year, it's not that much. But remember, they use the slow water reduction process. So one year of additional aging, it's a lot more labor and cost of just maintaining it. So make sure, making sure that it tastes really good. But second theory is that the Bourbon Pursuit review that they did two years ago on this bottle actually says that they don't use the slow water reduction process for the castor. So if 
that's the case and they use it for this, well, that actually makes a lot of sense why this is so much more expensive and hopefully tastes that much better. And as always, too much talking. Wow, actually that was way too much talking. I'm gonna need a drink or two in this case and not enough drinking. Let's get it, open ceremony. I'm actually really excited for this experience. So let's get right to it. The nose, regular castor. Wow. So you get dark sweetness right away. Caramel, brown sugar, some vanilla. Then it goes into a little bit of citrus, like orange, almost grapefruit kind of like a tangy citrus. And then the sweetness turns into more like a, like a dough, like almost like a toasted bread. And then the spice, very cinnamon heavy. Wow. So this reminds you of like a, like a cinnamon toast, a little bit of brown sugar melted and with a little bit of orange jam on top, a little bit of vanilla. So I don't know where I would put that in then, but then obviously caramel or brown sugar on top with orange jam. Hmm. Very interesting and very good. On to the single barrel castor. Oh, all right. So you get the same dark sweetness. The brown, you know, the burnt caramel, brown sugar. You do get vanilla as well, but it's more of a sweeter vanilla, almost like a vanilla pudding. And you do get the same citrus. So again, the orange jam is a very good way to put it because again, it's, it's a lot of sweet. And then the spice, cinnamon forward, very cinnamon. But you don't get a lot of the, you don't get any of the doughy breadness. So this actually will remind me of more of a vanilla pudding with caramel on top with cinnamon and I guess orange slices it you know mixed into it that's a pretty good nose as well all right so the nose winner the single barrel a lot more darker a lot more rich while again relatively the regular cash drink is a little bit more citrus for a little bit more orange almost grapefruit for it while this is vanilla pudding brown sugar caramel it's absolutely delicious so for the nose single bear. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, please push that like button. It really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because it'll give me the, the confidence to produce more content like this or better content than this. All right, on to my favorite part, the palate or the drinking. Fire in the hole, regular cash drink. Ooh. All right, so the first sip comes in pretty heavy, not hot, heavy. Comes in firing with cinnamon and it quickly turns into caramel brown sugar and it goes into a little bit more of like a coffee dark chocolate mocha sweetness yeah wow that's actually pretty interesting so it almost feels like if i had a really strong mocha with a lot of dark chocolate and i put in two shots of cash drink bourbon in it put a little bit of cinnamon on top with a little bit of nutmeg because it does have a little bit of like an almond like a pecan kind of feel yeah you get that richness you get that slight coffee richness so that's why it keeps on reminding me of mocha and you get a lot of dark chocolate but again the sweet caramel brown sugar so the mocha would absolutely need a lot of syrup in it as well but it, obviously it also has pretty good shots of whiskey uh, of bourbon wow very delicious. All right, let's move on to the single barrel. Fire in the hole, number two. Gotta say, it gives me a very similar feel. Obviously, they're similar, right? So you get the cinnamon, heavy cinnamon up front. And then it goes into the sweetness, the caramel, the brown sugars. But this one gives a little bit more of the vanilla. It's a little bit more vanilla forward. Then it is, let's say, cinnamon forward for the regular cash drink. It has a lot less of that coffee. So it's a lot more bourbon-ish. So sweet, spice. You actually don't get much fruit on the, uh, the single barrel, at least for this one. And the finish, get the cinnamon spice, sweet oak, get a good hug. It's actually really oily. And the mouthfeel is actually fantastic. The mouthfeel is much better 
on a single barrel than it is on the cash string. That's very interesting. Hmm. This one's very good as well. So the other factors, allocation, to me, they're the same. If I see this, I see this, especially at Total Wine and More. For stop points, they're exactly the same. If people know what Still Austin is, they know it. If they don't, they don't. But it's cool to have either bottle, just so you can say you have Texas, Texas whiskey. And to me, Still Austin is the best Texas whiskey distillery out there. And then the price, I already mentioned, 50 to $80. So with all that combined, is it worth the upgrade to get the single barrel at $80 compared to this at 50? No, it's not worth the upgrade. Now, disclaimer, this single barrel was better in terms of nose and palate than the Castrid, but it was slightly better, not that much better. And at $80, you can get three of this for less than two of this, and that matters. And there might be better single barrels than this out there, but there also might be worse. So I don't think it's worth that risk and the 60% upcharge to get a single barrel over the cash. This is a very good bottle. And at $50, I think it's one of the best values in bourbon. And as I mentioned, still Austin is probably the best Texas whiskey out there, at least that I tried by far. So for me, it's not worth the upgrade. And I'll keep getting the cash rate until I, I hear otherwise. Well, let me know in the comments if you had any of the, the still Austin cash strength or the single barrel. If you had both, which one you'd prefer? All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.